Family fun in Muswell Hill, North London, in the early 60s. But this is no ordinary family. These boys were destined to become the beacon carriers for British pop. Reflective older brother Ray Davis and his more outgoing sibling, Dave. Dave was not somebody who you'd easily squash. He's very feisty and the pattern of sibling rivalry was established very early on. It was music that really brought us together. We didn't have to really talk too much about how does that go or what. It just seemed to happen. The Brothers Davies beamed up schoolmate Pete Quaif on guitar to form the basis of the band that would become The Kinks. Pete really became like a family member because their interests in music were very similar. It was great fun. And we just used to sit up there and jam, and it was just like, a, you know, wow, you know, all this world is unfolding in front of us. You could feel that there was this little bit of animosity, you know, uh, going on. Um, Ray going, you know, I'm going to be better than you, and Dave going, I'm going to be better than you. And they'd come up with something and do something. Ray started playing these two notes on the piano. It's like a little jazz riff. I thought I could try that. I can remember us both looking at each other. Driven by Dave, the Kinks provided the perfect soundtrack to swinging 60s London. The whole thing with Dave's life is he attacks, you know. He doesn't sit back and think about anything, you know, it's just like, ah, it just goes into it. And that's the way he played guitar. I could, I could make a bloody guitar sing, it's just by forcing it. Ray and I expressed ourselves so differently, and Pete was right stuck in the middle, and poor sod, I, I can't imagine what at times what used to go through his head. We had, like, Jimi Hendrix at that end. Noel Coward at the other end. And there was always me in the middle, rocking it backwards and forwards, you know. Ray and Dave certainly didn't want to be together all day and all of the night. Their creative friction occasionally exploded into very uncreative fist action. I caught Ray with a lucky punch and he went down, but also he hit his head on the side of the piano, and he was lying flat on his back. And I thought, like, oh shit, I've killed him. I went up to him, I went up close to his face, see if he was breathing. He opened his eyes, <laughs> slashed me in the face. The kinks were one of the few bands I thought, personally thought, was kind of similar to Steve and I. We used to do gigs with them and, 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 you know, we could hear them arguing in the dressing room just the same as they could hear us arguing in the dressing room. Sibling rivalry. It happens. Ray wasn't just winning the physical fights, he was also starting to assert his more mellow style on the band. His music, lyrically, became gradually more and more observational and wistful as time went by and, you know, quintessentially English. It's almost Lowry-like, isn't it, Waterloo Sunset in its, in its uh, observational qualities. You might say the opposite, but I think all the really great songs were a collaboration. Ray was getting all of the notice. Dave was being left behind. And of course, being his brother, I mean, that's really irksome. Ray had become the pampered star, never one to take things lying down. Dave tried for a solo hit. Dry, and it my 
with Death of a Clown, I did feel like I was getting a bit fed up, and it was about just about the way I was, was feeling. The solo sideline fizzled out, but it did provide another stick for Ray to beat his younger brother with. We quite often used to ask for Death of a Clown on stage, which we hadn't done live that many times. Uh, so eventually, uh, it looked like we were going to do it. They would step out and begin to play Death of a Clown, and Ray would quite often walk straight in front of him and begin to sing Sunny Afternoon or some such song. The guitar, yes. Mr Death of a Clown, Dave Davis. Is to really get on my tits. I think there was a period when he disappeared up his own arse. I probably began to not like him as a person, although I loved him and I still do. But Ray had his reasons. His struggles to come to terms with the music industry were really taking their toll on his health, physical and mental. Success walks hand in hand with failure. All Ray's inner turmoil came to a head at a gig at White City in 1973. There was obviously something quite wrong with the way Ray was on stage. Uh, he suddenly interrupted the set and announced he was leaving the band. None of us took it that seriously. We thought, well, he'll be back in a couple of days when he's calmed down a bit. I didn't know that he was completely stunned out of his mind. He tried to commit suicide. I get a phone call saying, couldn't come and get your brother. He's in a bad way. And I went into the hospital and he just looked like this sad, lost little boy. Family was always very important to the Davids. And so way, when Ray did have his breakdown, it was Dave who really got him back on his feet. It is love and hate, it's not just hate. It's the ultimate love misunderstanding relationship. On his recovery, Ray returned to lead the group, but in a direction that increasingly sidelined Dave. His resentment became obvious when Ray opted for fancy dress to promote a Christmas single. We were supposed to attack Father Christmas, Ray, and steal his bag of toys. And Dave got a bit further into the action than he should have done, and we had to pull Dave away from Ray, who was on the floor by now, with his Father Christmas beard around to the side. And Dave's <laughs> attacking him like, no, Dave. Amazingly, the two brothers coexisted in the band for 33 years. But in 1996, each decided to go their own way, and both now perform separately. If we hadn't have been in this business, I think that we would have become much better friends. That gap between Ray and Dave has got broader and broader over the time. You put those two together, they will be nice for about two or three minutes and then all of a sudden it's you know well ring 911 hello ambulance um you know, 